Hello YouTube, welcome to the channel. If you get something out of the content that I put up here, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe and give me a like on these videos. It can make a real difference in the algorithms and how they share content with other channels. Also, if you're interested in some one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions, you'll find a good email on me in the description of every video I put up. Okay, big spike hammer. It's really weird to play that solo and to not be playing it with a band. That much of what I would do on a song like that is really just a reaction to everything else that's going on around me. So none of the times that I play this does it ever really come out exactly the same. I picked up a saying from one of my students recently, the grout between the tiles. So many of the key melody notes would actually follow true. I'm going to edit a video into this content of 3TO playing it live, and the solo is completely different than what I just did there. And you could also, we recorded this, Russell Moore did, on the Cracker Barrel record that we did years back. And the solo in that moment, uh, I'm sure it was overdubbed in the studio, but still a response to the way that that track felt. And then there's a Cracker Barrel promotional video of us playing it. The solo is different there too, uh, but the, those key things, the tiles, if you wanted to think of it like that, they kind of happen the same way each time. And then we have that whole grout between the tiles. So let's check out this live version of 3TO. And uh, then we'll just talk about what's going on with this. On the front of the solo, I may not have played the pickup notes the way that I am today. It could have been, it could have been either one, but I'm leading into the third scale degree, that series of pickup notes, or, or I could, I might play that double stop here. I might put the F sharp note in the bottom of the shape instead of on the high end of the shape. So we're playing in the key of B and we're coming into that third scale degree. So you've heard me plenty of times make a big deal out of the importance of really solid pickup notes on the front of your break. So that's what I was trying to pull off, you know, in the video that I edited in there. So there we have the next line. Now this is a really common bluegrass phrase to play and it, it leads us into the melody perfectly on this tune. I feel like I'm borrowing part of that from Bobby Hicks. I haven't listened to the bluegrass album band cut of this in maybe the longest period in my life without hearing it, but it seems like I remember something along that being part of his fiddle break. So you're picking up bits and pieces of things here and there from different players, and they kind of follow you, something like that that you like. So I'm following the melody. There we've gone. That's an A flat minor. That's a six minor chord of the B. So you can see that outline of the chord from the A flat note here, and then the third of that chord up to the fifth scale degree 
of that A flat minor, then back to another A flat note there on the fourth fret of the E string. Okay, so let's think of that as the tile, and, and we could play something around that. If I wanted to push into that chord, that's what we would refer to as chord anticipation. That before the band would actually get to that A minor chord, I'm already playing out of that position. There's a standard blues lick. You might already play that in G. That type of phrase. We're just a fret up from there. This is A flat minor. And I pushed into that thought. Out of that chord. We're about to go to an E chord. So let's think of that next outline here. Or with an open E string. So I'm going to play into that next line. I just used an E7. There would be a flat 7 note added to that chord. So I started on that flat 7 interval. If you're not following along with some of these things, you may want to look at some of the other arpeggio content that you'll find on the channel. But that line, that's definitely grout between the tiles. Those mel key melody notes that you really want to get back to in this, in this case, that A flat minor chord that we're going back to. That could be played a lot of different ways. Those are going to be the differences that you hear if you listen to the four examples of myself playing this that I've mentioned. So anyway, now we're going to be into a repetitive kind of thing that those, what we thought of as pickup notes on the front of the solo are just going to lead us back into, again, back to that tile if we wanted to think of it, after that A minor or A flat minor. Then... We're going to try to play those just as solid and with just as much authority as we did on the front of the break. So that's a carbon copy of what I played before. Now up to that E again. Up to the A flat minor. This time I'm going to the high side of that shape. like to use those chromatic notes up to that fourth fret which is our A flat and then we can play one of those really fun bluegrass kind of rolls that are so cool on these shapes like this in this case I'm playing the minor third and the root note of the A flat minor that's a, a really fun bluegrass line now here I'm going to make a video about the lick that I'm about to play. This is right out of the Alan Bobby playbook. I heard him play this lick on the new Quicksilver album that I think came out in 1995. And it's going to an F sharp. That's the five chord when we play in B. And the lick that he played, I don't remember the song that it was on. I need to call him about it before I make the video, but it's such a cool lick. So the grout between your tile could even be a lick that you just picked up off of one of your buddies. And like I say, I do plan to cover that particular lick as part of my lick series that's going on here on the channel. So there you have it. Like my version of um, Big Spike Hammer and the way it kind of varies. And all of this, like as you're playing it, you want to just be listening to the banjo roll. I really like to feed off of the separation that you hear in a banjo roll. Or it could be just what the bass player is doing or the way the guitar rhythm divides the measure. Find something to lock into, as they say, so that your solo can have a really cool spirit and a, and a really nice attitude because it's grooving with other things that are happening.